Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, why do I say that the twelve places are basically the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first common? Commentary. Moreover, Ananda, I will explain it further for you. You should listen carefully. Why do I say that the twelve places are basically the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first common? The place refers to a specific location. What are these twelve places? They are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. They make six and forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas. Another six. Together they make twelve places. Sometimes they are also called the twelve entrances, like the six entrances mentioned above. But the twelve places uh, also include forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas. The combination of the six sense organs and six differing objects are called the twelve places. Sutra Ananda, look again at the trees in the gentle grove and the fountains and pools. Commentary Ananda. Look again at the trees and the jetta grove and the fountains and pools. Take a look at Prince Wolf Victor's grove of trees. Sutra, what do you think do these things come into being because uh, the forms are produced and thus the eyes you see? Or because the eyes produce the characteristics of form? Commentary, what do you think? The Buddha asks Ananda's opinion. So these things are coming to be because the forms are produced and thus the eyes see or because the eyes produce the characteristics of form. Is it that the forms are produced and the eyes see them? Or is it that the eyes produce these characteristics of form? Explain this doctrine for me and listen. The Buddha has another question and I believe that by now Ananda is a bit of a headache. How do I know that? Because he didn't say anything. He didn't answer. So the Buddha continues. Sutra Ananda, if the organ of sight were to produce the characteristics of form, then the nature of form would be obliterated when you see emptiness, which is not form. Once it was obliterated, everything that is manifest would disappear since the characteristics of form would be would then be absent who would be able to understand the nature of emptiness the same is true of emptiness commentary ananda if the organ of sight were to produce the characteristics of form if you say that the existence of the organ of sight produces the external defiling objects the characteristics of form then the nature of form would be obliterated when you see emptiness, which is not form. Once it was obliterated, everything that is manifested would disappear. The nature of form would disappear in that, and when the characteristics of form were obliterated, everything would disappear. Since the characteristics of form would then be absent, who would be able to understand the nature of emptiness? Who could know of emptiness? The same is true of emptiness. The proposition that the eye produces the characteristic of emptiness would be wrong for the same reasons. Sutra, if moreover the defining objects of form were to produce the eyes of seeing, then seeing would perish upon looking at emptiness, which is not form. And once it perished, everything would disappear. Then who would be able to understand emptiness and form? Commentary. If, moreover, the defining objects of form were to produce the eyes seeing. If you want to say that forms produce the eyes seeing, then when there isn't any form, the eyes could not see. Then seeing would perish upon looking at emptiness, which is not form. Emptiness is not form, it has no form or appearance. If you postulate that seeing is produced from forms, then you should not be able to see emptiness and then and when there was no form, there would not be anything seeing, any seeing. 
once it the thing perished everything would disappear when the thing was gone nothing could be seen then who would be able to understand emptiness and form who would know that one thing was emptiness and that something else was form if there were no thing who could know sutra therefore you should know that neither thing nor form nor emptiness has a location and thus the two places of form and seeing are empty and forms their origin is not in causes and conditions nor do their natures arise spontaneously commentary therefore because of this ananda you should know that neither seeing nor form nor emptiness has a location and thus the two places of form and seeing not just as to form and seeing both the places are empty and forms Form has no nature of its own, and the thing has no nature of its own either. Their origin is not in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Rather, they are forms views which are produced from within the wonderful nature of true suchness of the first comers treasury. Sutra Ananda, listen again to drum being beaten in the Jatra garden when the food is ready. The assembly gathers as the bell is struck. The sounds of the bell and the drum follow one another in succession. Commentary. This passage explains the two places of the ear and sound. Ananda, listen again to the drum being beaten in the Jatra garden when the food is ready. When the food has been prepared, the drum is hit and everyone comes to eat. The assembly gathers as the bell is struck. If you want to gather together, you strike the bell. Nowadays, when it is time to eat, it is not a drum which is hit, but rather an instrument called the wooden fish. It is a hollow wood block shaped like a big fish. When it is time to eat, the fish is beaten and it makes the sound bong 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 so in Chinese it is called a bong in a large monastery there are many monks and if no signal were given people wouldn't know it was time to eat in fact some might even be sleeping away the morning in their rooms like certain disciples I have who are fond of sleep if you didn't make some signal to wake them up they would miss lunch so in large monasteries where hundreds or even thousands of monks lived, the bomb was hit when it was time to eat. It was beaten for a long time, and the louder the better. Why? To wake everyone up. And as soon as people who were asleep heard the bomb, they leapt up, grabbed their robes, sashes, and hurried off to eat. When monks eat, they wear their formal robes and sashes and they are very awesome and adorned. They do not talk while they eat. In the dining hall, a thousand monks may be gathered together to eat, and not one of them is speaking. Everyone is silent. When people have left their home life, they must abide the rule of eating at one sitting. They cannot get up and then come back and sit down and eat more. When the dining hall attendant comes around, he will give you one more of whatever you have not had enough of. He will give you as much as you want. If you want a bowl full, he will give you a bowl full. If you want to have a bowl full, you can indicate how much with your finger and your chopstick, and he will give you that much. In the past, an old cultivator who was a lame man, not a left home person, had taken the five precepts and also the precept against talking while eating but he had violated all five precepts and there remained only the precept against talking while eating which he had not violated so the spirit who protected that precept still accompanied him but he wished the layman would violate the precept so he could go to and no longer protect him but the layman never violated the precept when he ate, he never talked. Finally, the spirit of the precept came to him in a dream and said, 
You should talk when you eat since you've violated all the other precepts. Why don't you violate the precept against talking when you eat? Hurry up and violate it because I'd like to leave you too. The dream said the layman thinking. I kept that precept against talking while eating, but it turns out that there is a precept spirit to protect me. After that, he found a drama master with a way virtual and took the precepts over again. As a result of that, he cultivated and accomplished the way. Every person has his own particular causes and conditions, and in Buddhism, taking the precepts is a very, a very important matter. It is said that the bone, which is a heat when it is time to eat, was originally an evil man who became a fish in the sea. A tree grew out of the fish body, and the fish made a practice of using the tree to bash in ships and break them. When the ship was wrecked, the fish would eat people. Later, the fish met up with an heart who crossed it over, and afterward, the tree was used to make a bone shaped like a fish. And that is why the bone is bitten when it is time to eat. It represents helping to wipe out the that fish karmic offenses. So the fish could be reborn as a human. There's no foundation in this. It's only a legend, and I'm just passing it along to you. The sounds of the bell and the drum follow one another in succession. Maybe the bell is struck first, or maybe the drum is beaten first. In any case, the sounds follow one another in succession. Sutra. What do you think? Do these things come into existence because? The sound comes to the the region of the ear, or because the ear goes to the place of the sound. Commentary. In explaining about the ear, the Buddha has more to ask Ananda. He said, "What do you think about the sound of the bell and drum? What's your opinion, Ananda? Do these things that come into existence because the sound comes to the region of the ear?" These things are the sounds of the bell and drum. Do they come up inside your ear, and then you do hear, or because the ear goes to the place of the sound, or is it that your ear goes to the place of the sound? He asks Ananda, and Ananda doesn't have anything to say in return. Ananda isn't as brash as he was before, when he had an immediate answer for everything that was asked. Now he doesn't make a sound. He waits for the Buddha to explain it. Sutra again. Ananda suppose that the sound comes to the region of the ear. Similarly, when I go to beg for food in the city of Shravasti, I'm no longer in the Chatta Grove. If the sound definitely goes to the region of Ananda's ear, then neither Maudgalya Yana nor Kashyapa would hear it. And even less of Travanjan and Fitit uh, Shramanas who, upon hearing the sound of bells, of the bell, come to the dining hall at the same time. Commentary: Shakyamuni Buddha said again, Ananda, suppose that the sound comes to the region of the ear. Similarly, when I go to bed for food in the city of Shravasti, I'm no longer in the Jatta Grove. The Buddha is referring here to himself. Shravasti is Sanskrit. Does anyone remember what it means? I explained this at the very beginning of the sutra when I discussed the six realizations. You all have forgotten. Well, I can't remember it either. So we we'll all just forget it, right? I never explained it, and you never heard it. No speaking and no hearing is true, Rana. The city of Shravasti had an abundance of the five desires and of wealth and riches, and the people had the virtues, virtues of learning and liberation. So it is called abundance and virtue. You should remember this in Chinese. The Sanskrit Shravasti may appear as Shiwei Guo or Shiwei Fa Cheng. If you can't remember even that, this little bit. 
then when someone asks you to explain the six realizations and when the fifth realization plays is a shabasti all you'll be able to say is i don't know if someone asks you what shabasti means how much faith will you lose then you who are propagating the dharma will suddenly find yourself stumped by a question if someone should ask you some strange question it is all right to not to answer but if the question deals with something you should know about in the buddhist sutras and you can't come up with the answer it will be very embarrassing when i go to the city of shabasti to beg for food the buddha said i'm no longer here in the jetta grove this is an example of the fact that something can't be in two places at once thus if the south definitely goes to the region of Ananda's year, then neither Maurgalyayana nor Kashyapa would hear it. The ears are going out to the south, and yet another possibility which will be discussed later. If the south comes up beside your ear, Ananda, then Maurgalyayana, who was first in spiritual penetrations, and Kashyapa would not hear it. Why? Because the sound has come to your ear. The Buddha is really not speaking with any principle. Sound is basically all pervasive. Everyone can hear it and yet he explains it in this way. He is deliberately trying to be fatal Ananda. He is not speaking reasonably, uh, reasonably to Ananda just to see how Ananda will answer. Even less the 1250 shamanas who, upon hearing the sound of the hell coming to being, uh, come to the dining hall at the same time. How much less the 1250 bhikshus who, as soon as they hear the bell, all hurry in together to eat. Sutra. Again, suppose that. The ear that uh, goes to the region of the south. Similarly, when I return to the Jetta Grove, I am no longer in the city of Shravasti. When you hear the sound of a drum, your ear will already have gone to the place where the drum is beaten, being beaten. Thus, when the bell peals, you will not hear the sound, even the less that of the elephants, horses, cows, sheep and all the other various sounds around you. Commentary It was explained above that there is no principle in saying that the sound comes up beside your ear. If it were to come up beside your ear, then people would not hear it. And yet, in fact, the others can also hear the sound of the drum and the bell. This proves that the sound of the bell and drum do not come to the region of your ear. Again, suppose that the ear goes to the region of the sound. Perhaps you say that your ears go to where the sound is in order to listen to it. Similarly, when I return to the Jetta Grove, I am no longer in the city of Shravasti. Will you accept that doctrine, Ananda? Would you say I have spoken correctly? Yeah. You cannot argue with that principle. Therefore, when you hear the sound of the drum, your ear will already have gone to the place where the drum is being beaten. Thus, when the bell peals, then when the bell is sounded, you will not hear the sound. Your ear has already gone, so when there is another sound, you won't hear it, because that what will there be to hear it? It's the same as when I return from the city of Shravasti. At that time, I'm no longer in the city. So you say your ear, ear has gone, and yet, in fact, you still can hear.